Turkey is a country of beautiful nature. Eastern and Central provinces are especially amazing. You can find there picturesque lakes, deep canyons, mountains of an alpine nature, iconic Dorman volcanoes, spectacular volcanic craters, or landscapes straight out of a fairy tale. Welcome to Extremely Local Travels. Turkey, Part 5, Mount Nemrut, Cappadocia, and Lake Tooth. In this episode, we'll explore Central Turkey. We'll visit Nemrut Mountain, famous for a number of large statues. We'll experience typical Cappadocian morning. We'll admire unusual stone formations. We'll see a stone city in Zolf Valley. And we'll get to a hypersaline lake, Lake Tours. In the previous episodes we have shown interesting wild places we came across while traveling from Poland to Armenia. In Turkey we highly recommend such locations as Rainbow Hills, Sardala Bay Coast, Past Wild Sanjakli Beaches, Chengavit Seven Lake Valley, Colorful Kandikane Mountains, or iconic Lake Van and Sharpanak Island. Now it's time to visit the famous Nemrod Mountain. We spent the night on the roadside, somewhere in the Mount Nemrod National Park. The National Park is located in the southeastern Turkey. We didn't find any better parking place in the area. But here there was no traffic at all, and no one disturbed us. Even though it's very early, we have to get up for breakfast. Then it's time to head up the steep road towards the summit of Mount Nemrod. On the way there is a free parking place. If you don't want to pay for the entrance, don't use the official way further. Instead, you can climb the nearby hills, which offer a beautiful panorama. Their slopes will lead you towards the summit of Nemrod Mountain. The mountain ranges here are quite dry and covered with sparse vegetation. But the views are very picturesque. The last part of the route to the peak leads along the officially prepared trail. This is a seismically active area where dangerous earthquakes can occur. Mount Nemrut is a well-known tourist spot, but if you come here early in the morning, you probably have this place all to yourself. Over 2100 meters high, Mount Nemrut is famous for a number of large statues erected around the summit around the year 62 before Christ. King Antiochus I built on the mountain top a tomb, sanctuary flanked by 9 to 8 meter high statues of himself, two lions, two eagles, and various Greek and Iranian gods. At some point, the heads of the statues were removed from their bodies and damaged. In 1987, Mount Nemrut was made a Royal Heritage Site by UNESCO. From the top of the mountain, you can enjoy beautiful views of the mountain ranges of the Taurus Mountains. Time to go back to our car. On the way, we met cute goats grazing in this rather harsh environment.
time to drive further. Our next goal are composition characteristic stone formations. It's quite a long journey, so we don't know if we'll make it until evening. But on the way we can enjoy beautiful dry mountainous sceneries. The local road can be slippery due to the presence of animal droppings, so we have to drive carefully but you will definitely enjoy fantastic views. Let's see some characteristic landscapes that you can come across while traveling through central Turkey. We really love these local roads winding through picturesque, dry, mountainous terrain. Main roads aren't as nice as the local ones. It's so hot that the asphalt is melting. But in the evening, much more pleasant temperatures prevail. We arrived at the campsite in Cappadocia very late in the evening. Time to rest. Good night. If you camp in Gorama Historical National Park, you will not sleep long. The day starts here very early, even before sunrise. Cappadocia is famous for hot air balloon flights. They start before the day begins, so that the tourists can admire the sunset from the air. Such air balloon flights might be quite an experience, but they cost a fortune. Over a hundred euro per person for one hour flight in 20 person basket. In our opinion, it's a prohibitive price. It's half the cost of our one month lasting expedition per person. So it's better to admire the beautiful Cappadocian landscapes for free using a drone. As the morning passes, the balloons disappear. It's time to pack up the tent and explore the Goreme National Park in the area above Zelva Open Air Museum. This terrain offers amazing and spectacular landscapes that have been sculpted by erosion over thousands of years. You can find here typical dry slopes cut by valleys. From the summits you can observe beautiful sceneries characteristic of Cappadocia. The local mountains are composed of virus rocks of different hardness. Soft rocks quickly underwent erosion processes creating numerous valleys, while hard rocks are less sensitive to erosion, which contributed to the formation of fantastic landscapes. The most abandoned specific rock formations are located on the slopes around the Zelf Open Air Museum. Numerous so-called fairy chimneys are the hallmark of Cappadocia. They are made of rocks that are more resistant to erosion.
in the center of Goreme National Park, there is a famous Zelf Open Air Museum. It hides one of the most well-known rock cities in Turkey. A city located in the picturesque Zelf Valley. The entrance to the valley is paid, so we recommend free sightseeing from above using a drone. The city consists of many man-made caves that served in the past as housing and places of religious worship. Zalf was once a trifling settlement. First settlements date back to the 4th century. From then until 1952, this site was constantly inhabited. Zelf was a monastic retreat from the 9th to the 13th century and then a village. The monastery and dwellings were carved into the soft volcanic tooth rock, but after centuries of erosion, they became too dangerous to live in. The volcanic tuff itself turned out to be dangerous to health because it is suspected of contributing to the development of respiratory cancers. In 1952, due to safety concerns, villagers were relocated to a nearby town. Time for us to visit other places in Cappadocia. First stop is the Devran Valley, also known as Imagination Valley. It's known for its numerous and most thickly clustered rock formations in Cappadocia. Most of the rosy rock cones are topped by flattish darker stones of harder rock that prevented fast erosion of the softer rock underneath. It's time to go further to see the most spectacular fairy chimneys. On the way you can find many rock cones turned into dwellings. Some of them look like from a fairy tale, but they served as regular houses in the past. We have just reached the famous Pashava Bali. Here we can find the most impressive fairy chimneys in Cappadocia. Although the official entrance to the valley is paid, we suggest getting there for free from the western side. Or if you don't like crowded places, you can explore areas to the west of this busy tourist hotspot. They are equally impressive, but almost deserted. This place is like something out of a fairy tale. A forest of supersized rocky mushrooms. Legend has it that the unique shapes were made by fairies who built their underground homes below the rocks. Hence the name. Fairy chimneys. But geologists would tell you another version of their origin. 
fairy chimneys were formed by layers of volcanic ash and basalt, which were later covered by the layer of tuff. Relatively soft tuff easily eroded and formed the upper part of fairy chimneys. The top of the rock cones is frequently decorated with darker and harder stones that sheltered the cones from the rain and slowed erosion processes. In the valley, around strange rock formations, there are farmlands and orchards. Such unusually situated patches of air blue land look like they are from a fairy tale. And this is one of the reasons why these landscapes are deeply remembered by visitors to this place. The contrasting colors of vivid green of growing trees and yellow-brown dried grass are a characteristic feature of Pasha Balbali and surrounding areas. Beautifully composed rocky cliffs and fairy chimneys make Cappadocia truly unique. Time to visit another valley in the area. This time it will be the Love Valley. The Love Valley is located just north of the Gurema town. This place isn't as popular as previously shown Pashaba Valley. Mostly because you have to walk on foot to reach the center of the valley. But the valley is also far from being desolate. The landscapes are very similar and at the beginning of the trail there aren't many spectacular stone formations. but the fairy chimneys become larger as you go deeper into the valley. In the heart of the valley you can encounter the first seeds of commercialism. So it's better to hurry to see the wild valley before it becomes a mass tourism attraction. The name of the valley is associated with the numerous tall fairy chimneys that resemble... Well, make your own mind up. These wonderful phallic stone formations, some of them over 40 meters high, are the result of 16 million years of erosion of soft the volcanic rock, tuff. Love Valley has a length of about 5 kilometers. Except the central part, you don't feel crowded here at all. The vineyards and apricot trees make the valley more attractive 
and tasty too. Let's enjoy the view of the valley from the bird's eye view. Time to say goodbye to the stone cities in Cappadocia and to go further on our way. A large lake too caught our attention because it was visible on the map as big white spot. And it looked white for a reason. Lake Tuz in Turkish means salt lake. And indeed, there is a lot of salt here. Lake Tuz is the second largest lake in Turkey, provided it hasn't completely dried up at any given moment. In summer, the vast majority of the lake's water evaporates, creating a vast dry salt flat. But this year, you can see liquid water far on the horizon. Lake Tuz is decorated with numerous temporary islands. Now, they aren't islands anymore, because they are not surrounded by water, but by salt. Sometimes the lake waters turn pink. But this mainly happens before late summer, before the lake begins to dry. There are stepped areas neighboring with the southern shores of Lake Tuz. In these places, if you're lucky, you can meet colonies of flamings. Other areas surrounding the lake are mainly farmlands. Let's go back to our car. It's time to visit the deepest areas of the lake. The eastern bay of the lake rarely dries up. Even though there is a thick layer of crystallized salt on the shores, there is still water in the middle of the bay. Lake Tuz covers an area of about 1,660 square kilometers and is one of the largest hypersaline lakes in the world. For most of the year, the lake is very shallow, approximately 40 centimeters. Most of its area evaporates during the summer, exposing an average of 30 cm thick salt layer in August. The water level in the lake increases in winter due to increased precipitation and reduced evaporation. But even then, the salinity of the lake exceeds 32%. That's more than in a dead sea. The day is almost over. Time to find a camping place. We didn't have to go far. Near the main road we came across the area of an old abandoned restaurant. Quite creepy, but we slept in worse places. Good night.
and a beautiful morning has come. In the morning sun we can fully appreciate the charms of this camping site. Time to hit the road. Today we want to reach an incredibly beautiful lake, Lake Salda. The road to our target is quite long, so we decided to make a shortcut. Challenging shortcut. But thanks to that we got to isolated shores of Lake Ayurdish. The lake is quite known, but only from shores close to the main road. Let's keep driving along the lake. Maybe we'll find a nice viewpoint. Time to go further. You may encounter heavily overloaded trucks on the roads. I hope we are not very far from our destination. Finally, there it is. The deep blue lake Salva. In our opinion, it's the most beautiful lake in the whole Turkey. But to appreciate the lake's beauty, you should visit it in the middle of the day. We'll present it in the next video. Now it's slowly getting dark. Time to get ready to sleep. Good night. In the next episodes, we'll explore the most beautiful lake in Turkey, Lake Salda. We'll visit the famous water terraces, carbonate travertines in Pamukkale, and the areas nearby. We'll get to some unusual canyons, like Ulbe Canyon or Tasheron Canyon, beautifully carved by the flowing river. We'll see Kula Divlit Park with its colorful volcanic scenery, and we'll get to many other interesting places.